We have updates on the aftermath of the mill fire that went up in flames in downtown Kent last Friday. And you may need to watch your intake of ultra-processed food to avoid developing this disease. Is snow in the forecast for this week. The second week of December is here and it might be time to break out those snow boots. And a local holiday contest comes to a close. All this and more as your News in a Flash starts right now. This is TV2 News. Good Tuesday morning, Portage County, and welcome back to TV2 News. Thank you so much for joining us this morning for our last Tuesday flashcast of the semester. I'm Lindy Grasinger. And I'm Natalie DeSantis. With finals week right around the corner, it's a good time to indulge in some self-care. The Flash Activities Board and You Good have teamed up to give you a self-care night. There will be giveaways, brownies, hot chocolate, face masks, nail painting, and more. Stop by room 218 in the Student Center tonight from 5 to 7 to join in the relaxation. And if you're looking to make your room a little more festive, then this DIY decoration workshop is for you. The student-led event will give participants the chance to learn about 3D printing, 3D scanning, and laser cutting, all while making a cute little snowman complete with a top hat. The workshop will take place from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. in room 150 of the DI Hub. And with the holidays right around the corner, downtown Kent is not waiting to celebrate. That's right. TV2's Abby Forbes has the details on a contest getting people in the holiday spirit. Take a look. It's not just about Small Business Saturday. It's about really supporting local business throughout the holiday season and throughout the year. Main Street Kent's holiday window decorating contest brought some friendly competition and holiday cheer to downtown businesses. We really want our town to be a special place like we're not just shopping but there's actually like a real experience to walking around downtown and looking in the windows at all the decorations and lights as a part of that. The contest used to have a theme every year but now Main Street Kent gives the shops full liberty to be creative and decorate how they see fit. We wanted to do something a little different a little bit untraditional because we're not a real traditional looking store for Christmas and then with everything going on in the world right now we just figured let's go with world peace. Shops participating share the impact events like this have on the community. It's a little, you know, the, the business owners sort of participating in different fun events and activities that kind of make a city feel more like a community. The contest was from November 25th to December 5th, and ballots were available for anyone in the community to vote on their favorite windows. And the top three window displays are receiving a monetary award for their business. The top windows this year will be announced later in the day on December 6th. But at the end of the day, the shop owners expressed that it wasn't really about winning. I mean, like, we never win, but I love it. And it, it kind of gets you in the spirit of things. Creating them was a lot of fun, and seeing the finished product was fun. Um, but even better is just seeing the people come in and, you know, get excited about the windows. And the holiday cheer continues as excitement and ideas for next year are already sprouting. I'm not a very good decorator, like, by, like, nature, but I want to do it, so we'll, be, we'll do it every year. I'm already planning next year's window. <laughs> <laughs> Reporting in Kent for TV2 News, I'm Abby Forbes. Good morning, Portage County. I'm Mara O'Malley, and this weather does not want to get into the holiday spirit just yet. Lots of rain and lots of clouds, but still no signs of snow going into this second week of December. So currently in Kent, we are looking about 38 degrees, so a little chillier outside, but still not too bad since it is early in December. It feels a little bit warmer, about 40 degrees. We have a dew point around 60, 30, 36 degrees, my bad, and a humidity around 91%. We have a little bit of wind coming in from the southeast at two miles and visibility of up to four miles. So we have an hourly forecast today. Um, so around noon, you're going to be looking about 46 degrees, still pretty chilly outside, lots of clouds. And then around 5 p.m., it gets a little bit warmer. We're almost at that 50 degree mark, but a little bit of rain. So try and get your umbrella, get your raincoat because you might be having a little bit of rain as you're walking to class. And then around midnight, we just drop about one degree at 40 de 48, a little cloudy outside, but the rain stops at about five. So tonight going into tomorrow, you could have guessed it, more rain for this week. We have a lot of rain, a little bit of sun, but it's not very likely up in this upcoming week. Uh, we have a little bit of wind, six miles per hour, and the sunset pretty early at almost 5 p.m. 
And we don't know when that snow is going to start peeking through, but you can trade in for your snow boots for your umbrella for now. Now let's take it back to Lindy and Natalie, who have a special guest here with us this morning. Thanks, Mara. And speaking of the great outdoors, we do have a special guest with us today that's going to help us learn about some practices for being environmentally friendly as we get into the end of the semester. Absolutely. We are so excited to welcome Catherine Burns, who is the Programming Director for the Kent State Environmental Society. Welcome, Catherine. So what are some ways to recycle um, old dorm materials or anything um, as people tend to move out during the end of the semester? So I've seen like cardboard boxes being used and I know like when I was young I invested in like some tubs that I use but an alternative to ca cardboard that's holiday themed is making a cardboard cut out Christmas tree so like you yes. cut two and then you kind of like stack it together so it like makes four points and like a Christmas tree that is just yeah. adorable okay, and you. so where are some places people can donate like old school materials that they don't need anymore so I know for I know you mentioned um, school materials, but I kind of focused on like clothing materials. Mm -hmm. um, so there's the Portage Recycling Center. They take donations not only clothing, but other items as well. So I would check if they have school supplies, but they do have um, limited time. So you would have to look online for the registration to drop off. All okay. right. And as the semester comes to an end, what are some good practices for people buying presents that are environmentally friendly? So I know that the holidays is definitely a time of gift giving. So instead of materialistic goods, I like to gift an experience. So if a friend is looking forward to a concert that they really love, it not only creates less waste for the landfill, but it creates a long lasting memory. I love that I love idea. That. Yes, and speaking of gifts, uh, yeah. can you think of any creative ideas to um, use using the upcycled materials? Um, so, I have become like, I started like thrifting my gifts for my friends. So um, there's kind of like this stigma of like thrifting as it being less wanted because it was used first. But I think that like when you're opening a gift, you don't necessarily know where it's from. So mm -hmm. I like to gift like my friends mugs. And um, so I've been like thrifting like my gifts a lot more. I love that, I love that. And how do these things really impact the environment and help them? So when we reduced waste from the landfills, it basically like slows down like the greenhouse gas effect. So with less waste, we're just producing less like overall. Okay, perfect. Yeah. Well, as we wrap up, is there anything more you'd like to share? I just wanted to say like, thank you for having me on. And Absolutely. Happy holidays, everyone. Yes, we thank you so much, <laughs> Catherine. Thank you so much, Catherine. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So much, Catherine. Um, and moving on, the massive fire that destroyed Kent Star of the West Mill Friday is still being investigated by local and state authorities. That's right. Our own reporter, Sydney Brown, spoke with Fire Chief Bill Myers about the latest updates. Take a look. The Kent Fire Department has been working nonstop to keep the community safe after the former Star of the West Mill caught fire Friday morning. We do have some concerns with the front of the building there just because of the fact that uh, uh, the brick and stuff has uh, been displaced and so therefore it could be a fall hazard and uh, we're making sure that uh, a more stronger barrier is put in place there so uh, nobody gets up close to it or uh, stays away from it. An investigation started today with many agencies working together to determine the cause of the fire. We have the State Fire Marshal's Office involved, uh, ATF, uh, the Kent Police Department, and our investigators from the fire department as well. Exactly how long this will take, there's a lot of information that has to be uh, gone through and extrapolated so uh, it's going to probably be a little bit of time yet. Right next to the mill is Hometown Bank who had to evacuate Friday morning due to the fire. Yeah, we were closed we were closed for the rest of the day and the electricity to our building was shut off so our uh, we couldn't, of course, take care of customers. Not only was it impossible for them to get here because of the equipment and the fire, uh, fire folks fighting the fire, but we didn't have any electricity either. And that goes for our drive-through, which is right across the street. With the history in downtown Kent, 
Sessions is grateful their building is still standing. Every bank has their purpose and being a small community bank as we are right in the heart of downtown Kent, we've been here for 125 years and their work and their expertise and the fire department skills will allow us to be here a lot longer. But the people of Kent are optimistic about the future. And we are just just so grateful for the community and their support. Area businesses made sure that all of the firefighters were fed and we are honored to be a part of that. I want to thank the Kent community for their outreach of uh, helping us out and their support and so uh, very much appreciated. And, and I also want to mention too, I'm very uh, uh, thankful that our firefighters are okay. We had four firefighters that were inside during the explosion and, and for, upon further investigation, it just shows me uh, how close things were to a tragedy. Yeah. And so uh, we're, we're all very grateful that uh, everything turned out well. And another dam is being removed from the Cuyahoga River. The Gorge Dam is the last of five that have been removed from the Cuyahoga. The dam is currently the only thing standing in the way from it being a completely free-flowing river from Kent to Lake Erie. The removal will improve water quality as well as animal and habitat life. The state of Ohio is contributing $25 million to the removal of the dam. The first step began yesterday with the removal of trees and sediment. CDC has new information on this season's flu vaccines. And stay tuned to watch Mara and I battle it out in a gingerbread making competition. Tomorrow's news leaders. Today's top stories. From an award-winning student newsroom. This is TV2 News, truly Portage County. We will be making each other in gingerbread form. And we're gonna try and put the icing in a piping, piping bag. bag. Let's teamwork. Uh, teamwork on this one. So let's do maybe the green first. So I push this down then? Yeah, push it down and then we'll put like a little hole in it and then stick this guy on. Piping bag one is done. Okay. Okay. Yep. Piping bag number two. Last but not least, the red icing. Okay, cool. Piping bag number three. Now we're ready to get started. Mara is wearing a green sweater. I am. So I'm gonna start with the green piping. I'm gonna try my best. Oh, mm -hmm. I think I'm gonna start with Lindy's pants. I think I'm gonna go with the knife and like try and smooth it out a little bit. Ooh, good idea, Mara. Because there's enough icing here, I feel like. I'm thinking I wanna put some cute little pearls on her sweater. So half of Lindy's pants are going to look like this. <laughs> I think I'm going to do red pants. All right, yeah, take them, a look at Lindy's look. pants over here. Aren't they just beautiful while the beads are falling off? So I'm just putting some socks on Mara right now. You know what? I might make your shirt two colors. All right, so I think I'm just going to outline Lindy's face and then make her some eyes with some beads. Cute! Up. Okay. All right, we've added Hershey syrup to the equation because Lindy has dark hair. So this is how we're gonna go about this. So oh, wow. what I ended up doing for Mara's hair was I put down white frosting so that I could really pick up the color of the honey. I'm gonna dump these out on this little napkin and I'm gonna grab those like blue sprinkles there. I'm just gonna dab it. Now I just need to do Mara's mouth. I think I'm gonna go with the red. Maybe I should give you some red lips. Okay, I'm giving Mara a little bit of blush. Whoa, I'm getting makeup? Here's Mara. Here's the bee. Should we that was swap so fun. and see if they look like each other? Yes. Cheers to us. Cheers to us and the end of the semester. We're gonna miss you first. Cheers. So, Natalie, honest opinion, how do you think we did? I have to say that I was very impressed, especially yeah. with yours. <laughs> Mara and you, you both did very well. Spinning images, I think, of each other. And, most importantly, who do you think won? Oh, I don't want to pick sides, but I really liked yours. I like that you used honey. Thanks. Beautiful Yay. Mara, beautiful Mara. Sorry, Mara. <laughs> And moving on, Facebook owner Meta is threatening to remove all news content. 
Congress is deciding whether or not to pass the law that allows news organizations to negotiate with tech companies in order to distribute stories. This bill would allow new organizations to get a bigger ad revenue in exchange for giving websites like Facebook access to their content. All right, so I guess I may not have made the best gingerbread person, but I can tell you the weather. So just when you thought you couldn't get enough of me, I'm back with a little more weather update. So let's take a look at the temperatures across northeast Ohio. Right now we're looking at about the mid 40s to your high 30s, so not too crazy. Up in Cleveland, it's about 44 degrees. And then down in Canton, 41. In Kent, it's probably the coldest, so we're stuck with the short end of the stick on that one. It's about 38 degrees there. So you're looking at a pretty much the same temperatures all across Northeast Ohio. And then statewide, our temperatures are also looking pretty much the same. Down in Dayton, a little bit warmer, about 46. So almost at that 50% mark, at that 50 degree mark, but we're not there. It's December, so we're just lucky to be hitting the high 40s uh, at this point. And then in Athlon, it's uh, warmer there too, 47 degrees. And then up in Akron and Steubenville, 41, 40 degrees. So colder up in the north, but a little bit warmer down in south of Ohio. So last but not least, let's take a look at your seven day forecast. We have temperatures in your high 50s on Wednesday. It's about 50 degrees, a little bit of rain. So like I said before, keep your rain jacket out. Keep those rain boots out because we are seeing a lot of rain throughout the week. But on the weekend, we will be seeing some sun. So thank God for that one. On Saturday and Sunday, we have sun peeking through. But then back on Monday, it is 38 degrees and cloudy. So a little bit of sun here and there, but that rain is just going to keep working its way through this entire week. Now that is all I have for you today, Portage County. I hope you have a great week and a happy holiday. I've been Mara O'Malley. Let's send it back over to Lindy and Natalie. Thank you, Mara. The FDA is recalling a 1,260 cases of James Farm raspberries after a potential hepatitis A contamination. Symptoms of the illness include abdominal pain, fatigue, and jaundice and can appear within 15 to 50 days after exposure. Health officials are urging anyone who might have consumed the berries and are showing these symptoms to see a medical professional right away. Burgers, hot dogs, cookies, frozen pizza, the list goes on of our favorite ready-to-eat meals, but experts say you could be at a higher risk for dementia if you have more than 20% of your daily intake of ultra-processed foods, such as these. Research has shown that those who have a diet of mostly ultra-processed foods had a 28% cognitive decline and a 25% decline in executive function. The flu vaccinations are a very good match for the current strain that is circulating the nation this year, health authorities say. The virus hit earlier and harder this season, with hospitalization rates at levels that aren't usually seen until January. The CDC is urging the public to get their shots as soon as possible if they haven't already. And I'm excited to see what kind of holiday treats Della and Natalie whipped up coming up. Cat State is on the search for a new head coach. Hear all the details about Sean Lewis's departure from Cat State. And now, your TV2 Sports Report. Rise and shine, Portage County. It's sports time, and last night, all of our hearts broke as we got the news that the Cat State head football coach, Sean Lewis, is leaving to take the offensive coordinator job at Colorado under their new coach, Deion Sanders. Cat State plans to build on the foundation that Lewis built here, which included the school's first ever bowl win and MAC championship appearance a season ago. The buyout of his contract is $750,000, which will be reinvested into the KSU football program. The Athletic also reported that Lewis addressed the team last night regarding his decision. Kent State will pivot in search of a new coach to hopefully bring home that elusive MAC championship title. Now we will take it to somewhere much warmer than here, to Tampa Bay we go. Nothing better than the GOAT in prime time. Happy Monday. Saints up here. Dalton looking for someone, but he's got to throw it away. Jannard Avery is charging at him. I'd throw it too, Andy. No worries though, Taysom Hill, he'll finish the job and give Nola the lead. 38 yards, that ain't too much for Will Lutz. The Saints will extend that lead over the favored Buccaneers. And no, it is not deja vu. We're going to see another field goal here because Andy Dalton could not get it done with the offense. So Lutz goes between the posts for another three. 
And this, my darlings, is why you can never count out Tom Brady. Three minutes left in the game, down by 13. Cade Ott, and he will get the offense rolling for Tampa. And what's prime time without a little comeback? Brady to Rashad White. He will extend that arm and leave this game up to the kickers. The Saints defense was looking heavenly the whole game, but they had some picks and interceptions, and when it counted, they couldn't get that crucial stop. And who doesn't love a kicker? Ryan Suckup, he says, suck it up, Saints. Hoist the flag, Tampa. Tom Brady doing Tom Brady things. He squeezes out the win, 17-16 final. And on the road last night, the Kent State men's basketball team fought hard to bring home a win against Gonzaga, but ultimately fell 73-66. to The Flashes proved that they could hang with the big dogs, only trailing by a few points for most of the game. But as we've seen before, in the last two minutes of the game, the defense fizzled out and they did not have time to recover. The Flashes will look to bounce back on December 10th against Cleveland State, and tip-off is set for 3 p.m. That is what we have for sports today, but don't worry, we will be back in the spring. However, for now, happy holidays. From the TV2 Sports Desk, I'm Della Fowler. So Della and I also put our engineering skills to the test in this tasty challenge we did to get in the holiday spirit. Welcome back, Portage County. Earlier in the show today, you saw mine and Mara's attempt at making a gingerbread look-alike, but <laughs> we weren't the only ones on this couch trying to make a festive treat. <laughs> That's right, Lindy. Della and I tried our hand at making some gingerbread creations as well. Today, we are making some sleighs. I'm so excited. I'm so excited. I'm so ready. Okay, I'm gonna pipe this. I'm gonna put the, uh, in the pipe. I'm getting the base of it done. But I'm also trying not to use all the placing because I know you have a slide to slide to. Look, I'm low-key kind of getting a little artsy with it now. Are we doing little swirls? Unintentional slides. I'm gonna take a break from this and I'm gonna mm -hmm. I'm gonna put the I'm gonna take one for the team and put the green in the piping bag. Okay, slay. Okay, this works. I'm getting there. We have kind of lines. We kind of have lines. Speed round. <laughs> Five yes. minutes. Go. This is like on like the Great British Baking Show when like the things are like five minutes bakers. I might make a star. I might do it. I'm gonna go for it. What do you? That's what do you do with the tree? Here? No. In the I sleigh. Think, let's because just, Santa's bringing the like. Let's forget the sleigh and let's just yeah. put my tree in it. I agree. We're big tree girls. Well, we are tree girls. Let's eat it. Okay. Oh, it's so beautiful. I'm not eating this tree. I don't think I can eat it. I'm eating this candy cane. Do it. This uh, this is ugly. Do it. So. I'm gonna I'm gonna just I'm just gonna take part in this. Yeah, just like yank it. I'm just gonna do a little nacho cheese moment. Oh, so true. Okay. Okay. That Cheers, Miss Girl. Let's go. Well, hopefully your gingerbread happenings are better than ours. That was great, guys. <laughs> very interesting. Yeah. That was great. You're being too kind. Yeah, you're being. I really enjoyed, but the yeah. walls were just collapsing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yes. Yeah, so there's a fun. reason why I'm not in architecture. Yeah. Yes, yes. That was the best part of that. <laughs> this yeah. was so fun, guys. Would you guys plan on doing anything fun like this on your break? Oh, 100%. I want to try it with my sisters. I think it would be so funny because <laughs> I don't have to see how it turned out with us and how it turned out with you guys. It would be a great time. I would love I'm, to try it. Anything would be better than mine, honestly. <laughs> Literally. No, my friends and I are hosting a holiday party on Saturday and we're talking Fun. about doing gingerbread houses. But I think Fun. I scared myself away from it if <laughs> yeah. I'm being completely honest. Because no. my skills yes. were not there. I don't know if I can handle mm -hmm. the embarrassment in front of all my friends. I was trying to make another gingerbread house. That's well, so funny. My Nana and my mom and I, we all like to watch like the holiday baking championships, like all <gasps> kinds. It's a great um, show. And they're always making gingerbread houses under such short time periods and I have no <laughs> idea how they do it. I no, really I do not. Say, I saw one where someone made a Quidditch arena from like <gasps> yeah. Harry Potter. Yes. Made, <laughs> gingerbread. Unbelievable. And I was like, wow, is Unbelievable. that even possible? Like, yeah. How did they how get it to stand so creative? I mean, really. Yeah, <laughs> I'm not gonna, I just, let's just say 
we are all journalism <laughs> Yeah, for a reason. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> well, that is all the time that we have for this morning. For updates on these stories and more, be sure to visit our website, KentWire.com, and follow us on social media at KentWire. I'm Lindy Griesinger. I'm Natalie DeSantis. I'm Mara O'Malley. And I'm Della Fowler. Have a great day and happy holidays, Portage County.